Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Burnham and this is the return of Let's Play Wizardry with Grid Cartographer. But uh, now we're on the NES version. Uh, that's right, I'm bringing this series back after two years. <laughs> Sorry it took me so long, uh, but it felt like the right time and it felt like the right game. And uh, there was just such an overwhelmingly positive response to the DOS Wizardry video that I really wanted to get back to it uh, for the past two years. I've been really wanting to try this again and see how it goes. Um, even recently, I've been seeing a lot of positive comments about this and people talking about how uh, they played Wizardry way back in the day and really loved it and they really enjoyed watching this. Um, I really wasn't sure how people uh, would react to that first video, but uh, it went really well, I think. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this too, uh, especially during COVID times. I really want to try to make uh, videos that will that people can enjoy and do make the kinds of things that people will get a lot of enjoyment out of. Um, so yeah, this seemed like the right time, and I've got enough time, enough free time, surely, <laughs> to do this. Uh, also, I know a lot of you first subscribed to me back in the day for the Wizardry 8 Let's Play, and uh, I don't want to leave you guys out in the cold for too long. <laughs> um, I know it's been a while since I've made something like this, but uh, I hope you like it too. Um, also, I played a few hours of this video, or of this game, really recently, and uh, it actually went pretty well. I think it's easier than the DOS version. It's still really hard, um, but I think it's going to be suitable enough for videos. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I've made it to, like, Technically, I've made it to the fourth floor, although I haven't made much progress there. Uh, I recently got to the third floor where there's an elevator, and we'll kind of get into that. Um, I've definitely lost a few parties in the dungeon already, but I think we'll be able to get through this with some amount of grinding at the very least. Uh, so I hope you all enjoy this uh, look again at Wizardry in a slightly different lens. Uh, the video formats are mostly going to be a long form, like I usually do. I'm going to try and break it up into 30 to 45 minute chunks. I'll try and edit out the parts that get too tedious, especially for this game. I know there can be a lot of grinding. I'm expecting there to be a lot of grinding when we lose a party and try to get enough gold to at least revive people or start all the way over, basically. A lot of the progress we're going to be making is on the map because I expect to lose parties a lot of the time. Uh, we're going to continue to use Grid, grid Cartographer, obviously. Uh, luckily, GC has a game link for both the DOS and the NES version of Wizardry, so we'll still be able to um, use the auto map feature, which is super handy. Um, gonna try and keep the tone of the video still mostly formal and talk about the design of the game and analyze things that we're finding in the level design. I always like to talk about that, um, but try and keep I'll try and keep them pretty lighthearted too. So hopefully there's a good mix of like humor and insights in these videos. I hope you like that. And I'm going to try and release them uh, every week. I might have to skip a week here and there due to stuff that comes up, or just because I need a break uh, during COVID times. Who knows what's going to happen, right? In 2020, everything's crazy. So I'm not promising a perfect schedule, but I'm going to try and release these once a week for sure. And another disclaimer I would like to make is that I will make mistakes. I'm not an expert at this game by any means. I've never beaten it before. And this is a notoriously really hard old old game, um, and I just ask that you be kind in your comments and thoughtful. Uh, one of the worst parts of the Wizardry 8 Let's Play is that I get people telling me what I did wrong in a not nice way, <laughs> and that was my least favorite part of doing those videos, um, but I always love having, getting like thoughtful uh, feedback, and I really appreciate that, so I just ask that you keep any of your comments kind and thoughtful, and then we'll get along great. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about the history of this version of the game. It was released in 1990, which was 10 years after the original, so uh, Wizardry had been around for quite a while, uh, even back in 1990, and it was five years after the NES launch, so it was a good way into the NES's lifetime already. And as you can see, we've got some fancier graphics, we've got actual music, we have some sound effects. Um, there's some better sprites. The, the dungeon walls actually have walls now <laughs> instead of just the wireframe, although you can choose between... you can choose to play with the wireframe if you would like. Um, 
Apparently there's also three floors that are mapped out differently than the original DOS game. I'm not sure what those differences are exactly. I'm going to try not to spoil myself on those quite yet. But if we do get horribly stuck, I am going to look up spoilers because I don't want to spend forever looking for some really esoteric solution. Um, but just know that going in, this version is slightly different than the original. Um, what else? I'm going to show you the options right now. And because we're playing on the NES, I'm using basically NES controls with a D-pad, A and B, and start and select, which I've mapped to my keyboard, so you'll still hear my keyboard, but know that we're using NES controls. So we are bound by some of those limitations. Let's hit select switch and see what that does. Oh, okay. So the maze option allows us to switch between uh, solid walls and the line walls, which is basically the wireframe and the uh, the wall textures, which are basically sprites. Uh, we can keep the music and the sound on, and that's pretty much it that we get for uh, options before we actually get into the game. Um, oh, also, this version was published by Nexoft and licensed by Surtech. And as far as I can tell online, uh, it was only developed by 16 people. There were not a lot of developers on it. Um, and it's mostly, like I said, a straight port, but still, it's pretty small team by today's standards for a full release game. Um, yeah, I've made some map progress as you can see already. I've mapped out uh, what I can, what I have access to on the first floor so far anyway. I think there's more over here, but I'm not sure yet. Um, again, it's a 19 by 19, or a 20 by 20 grid, um, starting at 0, 0 as you do in computer programming, I guess. <laughs> uh, floor 2, I've made some progress and gotten to floor 3. On floor 3, there seem to be a lot more traps, especially uh, this path leading to the west here. Uh, I found an elevator that goes between floors 1, 2, 3, and 4. And on floor 4, I tripped an alarm that triggers a bunch of monsters to come fight and including like dragons and fairies and stuff and it just slaughtered my party which I've uh, marked here. So I'm going to attempt to try to get back there but uh, no promises there. Either we're probably just gonna have to grind up a new party to try and make more progress on floor three and avoid this kind of death trap hallway which I think is just meant to loop you here and then kill your first party. Like the first, the first two floors are not really bad at all difficulty-wise, as long as you roll some decent stats. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's actually get into the game here. Uh, and all of the shop, or all of the um, castle areas have music too, and I just want to transition over to one thing. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys the NES manual as we're going through too, because it has some awesome artwork and uh, it's a little bit better laid out than like the DOS version manual was um, and if I ever have to refer to the manual to see like stat requirements or what spells do I'd like you guys to be able to see that too so I've got that pulled up and I will put a link to that in the description too if you want to look at the manual yourself um, but yeah it talks about the castle here goes through all the options just like we just did I really love the artwork that they included this is a really nice scan I got off of the Internet Archive, too. I found some scans that were not as good. You can see the, the, the wizardry logo and the dragon here, too, which is great. And let's just read through the story here uh, once more. The mission. One morning, Trebor, the Mad Overlord, noticed that the fabled amulet, which he constantly held in his possession, had disappeared. Realizing his ultimate fear come true, he uttered, It must have been stolen while I slept. Looking around the room, hoping to find the amulet, he instead saw a note sitting on the table. Foolish Trebor, I did not think I could take the amulet this easily. How senile you have become. Do not attempt to retrieve the amulet, Trebor, for your best efforts will surely fail. The great wizard, Wordna. When Trebor finished reading the letter, it burst into flames and turned, burned to ashes. The angered Trebor sent notices throughout the countryside and gathered soldiers to recover the amulet. Those who are able to recover the amulet will be rewarded with great riches and much distinction, he announced to the soldiers. 
Thus, adventurers from throughout the country who were confident of their skills gathered under Trebor and entered the dungeon deep below the castle in hopes of conquering Wordna. So again, same premise, but uh, I just wanted to go through that, and I think this intro might be slightly different than the DOS version too. Um, we know that uh, Andrew Greenberg and Robert Woodhead are um, the, the real names of these these characters, what these characters are named after, I suppose. Uh, so just wanted to point that out. Once again, that's something everybody knows about this game. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this castle map that shows us where all these different places might be laid out. It's kind of sparse looking otherwise, but at least you can kind of imagine where these areas of the castle actually are. And uh, apparently the maze entrance looks like a sewer grating type thing. Uh, I like this training ground too with the training dummies. You can just picture this going on as we're building our characters in a much more boring fashion. Um, this artwork is a totally different style too, it seems like. But yeah, let's uh, let's actually make a party, and I will get to the section where it talks about uh, characters. So again, we've got humans, elves, dwarves, gnomes, and hobbits. Uh, that can be good, neutral, and evil. Alignment doesn't affect too much, except that um, some classes have to be of a certain alignment, or can only be two alignments instead of all three. And the alignment you choose for your characters must be compatible with the class. Um, and good and evil characters cannot travel together, uh, but neutral characters can travel with either alignment. So basically you end up with either an all good and neutral party or an all evil and neutral party. And then what, from what I've read, the evil parties are better because they have access to ninjas, which are extremely strong. but. Uh, good parties still have the Lord, which seems strong enough too, so I'm not going to worry too much about like late game stuff right now while we're just exploring still and getting used to the game. Maybe later on I'll try to build like a super party to actually get to all the way to the bottom 10th uh, floor. And again, there's 10 floors in this game, just like in the DOS version. Go through the stats again, which you can kind of guess uh, what they do. Uh, we've got the same classes, Fighter, Mage, Cleric, Thief, Wizard, Samurai, Lord, Ninja, and uh, then it goes through more of what the stats actually do. So let's actually build a new party here, and I'll switch back over to the grid view. I'm going to have to remember to hit my switch button now that I've, I've got that other screen, but I think that's going to help a lot with this Let's Play too. So. Uh, it's a little bit less tedious if you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, let's actually go to the training grounds and create a new party. Uh, you can see I have quite a few dead or out characters already, and there's only 20 slots for characters in this game. I think that's the same in the DOS version too, or maybe you actually get less, I'm not sure. Um, but again, we're gonna, always going to we're going to roll with a party with three fighters, a thief, a mage, and a cleric, generally, unless we have good enough stats to get to one of those more elite classes. Uh, but that's generally what we're going to try to do when we make a new party. So we'll say Opie will be a dwarf fighter. I guess we'll do uh, like a good party for now. These stats are okay. Ten vitality is pretty good. Put it all into strength so we can do more damage. Um, I've already had a Guile before, let's call this guy Guile though anyway. Some little better stats here. And uh, let's name this guy Fred. Even slightly better stats, looks like. And then we need a thief who we will name Garrett because I've been playing a lot of Thief 2 recently. And thieves, hobbits make good thieves. Uh, thieves have to be neutral though. 
um, or evil, I believe. They cannot be good. So, these stats are not great. He does have high luck, though. Uh, thieves are pretty notoriously terrible in this game. Um, let's just make a Merlin for the mage. Easy to remember that way. Okay. Oh, that's right. I think gnomes are actually better at being clerics. So let's actually do piety. We'll have a, a Merlin gnome who might turn into a wizard later. <laughs> um, I'm not going to waste points on IQ right now. I do want them to have a good amount of hit points, though. And now we actually need a mage, so let's do... Let's name him Wrath. A wreath, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to worry too much about this. Uh, I think it's elves that could be mages? Yeah. They also make good wizards, because they have high IQ and piety. I want him to have a good amount of hit points. We could go for a wizard right off the bat. That seems kind of foolish, though. I tried it once, and it seems like you're really limiting yourself, because while well, you do have access to both spellbooks, um, you don't get those high levels of spells as quickly, so we'll just roll with that. Now we've got our six. It's a little bit... it seems like it's a little bit faster to create a party in this game, which is nice. Or at least it's about the same. Okay, we've got our party, and then we have to go buy stuff. And I may not always show this creation process, but I just wanted to, to show it again in the first video, at the very least. Because we always have to make a new party, and we always have to take them to the shop to buy gear, unfortunately. I wish they would just start out decked up. Uh, decked out already. But alas, they do not. Um, this guy started with a lot, though. So we can afford the chainmail. At least it auto-selects to the next character after we're done with one. And we get to listen to the, the fun shop music, you know? I also have not played too much when I'm talking at the same time, so... I may make some mistakes, but I think I have a, a good grasp on the game now. Or the, at least the basics. I'm gonna buy a small shield just so we can buy the chainmail. Uh, the book advises if you ever have gold left over, you should use it to buy helms for your fighters when you're just starting out. Uh, the thief can use... Uh, there's also a nice indicator on the right there with the hash symbol. That's indicating that a class cannot use those items, so that's nice to know. You can get a small shield for the thief. And some leather armor. We still have 105 left for this character. Unfortunately, a lot of the uh, higher tier items are way too expensive for us. The Gloves of Copper are 6,000, which we can only dream of right now. I'm sure later on that will not be nearly... That will not seem nearly as out of reach, but who knows. You can actually buy a shield for um, a cleric. Oh yeah, I was, I was thinking it was the mage because we named it Merlin, of course. <laughs> so that won't be confusing at all. Uh, we can actually rename characters, so I think I'm going to do that. Um, let's buy an anointed flail, and I think if we pull all our gold, we'll actually have enough for that, yeah. And might as well buy chainmail for him too. And then we have to pull our gold again, and we will buy a staff. Mages really get shafted. They can't wear very much at all, but pelt, their spells are really good. And we can equip them later. And if I go to the adventurers and... Or if I go to the training grounds, can I rename... Yeah, let's rename Merlin to something that makes sense. Um, let's call him... as the cleric. Cool. And then I 
think I have to add people back again. Yep. That's everybody. Okay, let's actually get into the maze finally. I know that that took a while, and uh, I promise I'm not going to talk so much on each video without actually playing the game, but we needed all of that preamble just to set everything up. I think this game kind of deserves all that setup too, because it's so old and... Uh, I want to say it's well respected, but uh, looking at the reviews at the time, uh, this game did not actually get that good of reviews because it's it was a 10-year-old RPG, and even in 1990, uh, people had gotten used to playing more advanced things. So I was looking at the EGM uh, Electronic Gaming Monthly reviews uh, from back in the day, and it's pretty funny to see people uh, even back then saying. This game was really not worth it on the NES, but I think it's worth it to go back to. I've been enjoying it, at least. Um, you just need to have a lot of patience. So yeah, this is what the dungeon looks like now. We've got these nice uh, sprite textured walls here, so we can actually... So the walls actually look like walls. Uh, I don't think that ever that look ever changes, but at least the doors look like doors and the walls look like walls. So there might be some other sprites later on. Um, the holes in the ceiling look like holes, generally, uh, to indicate where the stairs are. I'm going to signify those with ladders on the map, though, just because it kind of makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, and yeah. Uh, oh, also, one other thing I want to mention is that since we're playing with an emulator, we have the power to use save states, um, so we can save and load our state of the game, and I will probably be using that pretty heavily just to make sure that we don't lose too much progress doing something really stupid. Um, like if we fall in a pit trap and everybody dies, or we come against a really, really challenging random mob. Uh, I think that's going to save us a lot of the time in the end, and it's not going to make our experience worse or make, like, um, dull the authenticity of our experience too much. Um, I think even the designers of the game would agree now that uh, it's kind of hard to go back to, so we're going to use as many modern affordances as we possibly can. It seems like we have a pretty decent party here. Uh, yeah, enemies in this game, I've noticed, have a, a real... Uh, they really like to run away um, from decently powered parties, so... A lot of the time we're going to be trying to pursue those weaker monsters to get more golden experience. It doesn't take too much experience to get to uh, level 2, thankfully, but we can't tell how much experience we need unless we go back to town. So we can see we have 138 experience, and whenever uh, the game says that we get experience, that means that every character in the party gets experience, not just, it's not divided six ways, it's just everybody gets that amount, so that's easy to keep track of. So we don't have to do mental math every time. Uh, these bubbly slimes are pretty weak, I think. We are going to use Kalki just to boost our AC. And again, we're using uh, basic D&D rules where armor class gets better as it gets lower. So uh, towards the end of the game, we'll have negative armor classes, and that'll actually be good. But just keep that in mind. When you see that I use Kalki and my AC goes lower, that's actually a good thing. Uh, Kalki lowers our AC by one. And uh, I'm not going to use a sleep spell quite yet. Let's just see what happens. Kill the slime. He's hitting us for one damage, but that's not too bad. Killed another slime. Keep hitting us for one, but we have prevailed. Didn't get too much experience out of it, but there's a chest here. Um, we can always inspect the chest to find out what it is. Um, and in my experience before, the level 1 thief was not very good at disarming things, but the level 2 thief was a lot better. So I think I'm going to leave this alone, just in case. Because it really sucks to have your level 1 party killed right at the start, just to have to go make another one. So we are going to be grinding a little bit here. But these small humanoids are usually not bad at all. Uh, I might have to use a heal, though. Uh, some of our fighters are pretty low here. 
uh, hits means hit points, and status will actually say the max amount of hit points if they're not like poisoned or something else, which is nice. Um, let's use Dios, which is our healing spell on Guile. And could actually just cast a Halito, which is like a fireball. One ran away. Guile's completely healed, nice. Small humanoid leaps at Fred and hits two times for six damage, I think. Fred's not dead yet, thankfully. And we wasted a Halito there, but uh, alright, that means we have to go back to town so we can heal. <laughs> um, we do have one more Dios spell. Oh, we thought we did. We only have one at, the at level one, huh? Okay. Um, we might have enough experience for some people to level up now. Uh, another thing we have to keep in mind is that characters get worse when they age. Um, they, their stats go down. Or some of their stats go down and some go up, I think. I'm not entirely clear on how that works, but that's why um, 10 GP per 10 GP to fully rest is really good to get back a hit point, but it takes an entire week for that, so that's why it's sometimes better to pay more money for uh, per week because A, you can get a few more hit points back, but B, it takes less time uh, in-game time, so your characters will be younger overall, so that's something we have to keep in mind too. But if we just want to check how much experience we have, we can go to the stables. 628, okay. And how much gold do we have? Let's pull it. Probably don't have a ton. Okay, that's gonna be enough, I think. Um... Try and just get back to full. So there we spent like like ten weeks just resting. So um, Guile is at full, and then Fred we have to get back up to full. Fighters still need six twenty eight. How about the other characters? Five twenty eight, six seventy eight. 728. So, as you can see, each class requires a different amount of experience to level up. Um, so we need to go through a few more fights to actually get to level 2. I'm not... Okay, we're about half an hour through this video, so we'll probably play for like 15 more minutes. We're gonna get to level 2 at the very least and explore more of the dungeon. See so yeah, how these... This beginning floor, level 1, really does not have much on it, but there is a key up in the top right that we can go grab. A silver key, which I'm still not sure what we can use it on. But most of the, the floor 1 encounters are not too bad. We'll just use... Oh, because we used a cow key, that's why we didn't have a Dios available. It's just like in D&D where... You only have a certain amount of slots that you can use every day, and you have to assign those slots to spells. Luckily in Wizardry, we don't have to worry about which spells we want to prepare, they're just all prepared every day, and then we just pick which ones we want to use. Um, which is like, uh, if you play D&D, it's like the 5th edition Cleric works the same way. Uh, we're taking some damage. Killed a couple. Oh, three of them. Nice. We only took some minimal damage there. Hopefully we get a good amount of experience. Yeah, 276. Nice. Um, I'm gonna use a Dios on Opie. Wow, our cleric must be really good, because he's getting really good rolls on the um, heal points. How much piety does Quas have again? Uh, 14. So maybe we're just getting really good rolls, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a random amount of HP that you get back. Orc fleas, orc misses, orc fleas, orc fleas. Okay. Kill the orc. Nice. Yeah, overall, I think this game feels easier than the DOS version anyway. Seems like I'm getting through it easier at the very least. Uh, we don't have a spell. 
Let's use a Halito. Actually, let's use a Katino. Since there's four of them. Katino is the sleep spell. And of course, they're all gonna run away. Killed one, killed two. The other two are gone. Poison Needle. We definitely want to avoid poison, so we're gonna leave that chest alone. Um, you can cure poison if you get back to town in time, but poison does one damage per tile that you step on, just like in uh, Pokemon. <laughs> so uh, if you get if a low level character gets poisoned, it's pretty much a death sentence. Um, and there's also secret doors in this game, uh, which seems obvious, but one thing I didn't know is that sometimes the doors move, and it doesn't mean they're gone, it just means that the sprite is gone. Um, I don't know if that's a bug or if it was intended, but it, I, it seems intended to me. In this room is a silver statue of a boar with horns and long fangs. On the wall by the statue is a message, partially obscured, that appears to have been left by passing elves. It is hardly legible, but some comments warning about ghosts and demons can still be made out. We will search, and we found a key. And like I said, I'm not sure what that key is for yet. Um, there's also a hazard on this floor that we can't get through yet. A large sign on the wall reads, Area Out of Bounds. As you enter this room, a gold smoke fills it. You feel compelled to leave immediately. It's dark. And in the NES version, I believe that you can actually get through this without being stopped. But in, I think this is one of the changes in the NES version that I read about is that you can't actually get through it. Um, I think we need a gold key to get through here, which seems a little weird that you would need a key to get through smoke, but that's just old video game logic. So we're going to have to try and find a gold key somewhere. And I don't think I found that on the second floor yet either. We're not going to go down yet because I want to level up first. But we can fight some more monsters and be relatively safe about it. We surprise the monsters, which is super good. Uh, during the surprise round, we can't cast spells, but we can use Dispel, which is like Turn on Dead. If you play D&D again. Um, if we turn monsters, we don't get the XP for it. He did a bunch of damage to Guile, actually. And it is possible for the chest to not be trapped. But that one was... We don't have a DFs left, right? Yes, so we need to leave. So Guile doesn't get killed. We might run from these guys. Yeah. If we had surprised them, then I would fight them, but... A friendly group. Yeah, it's, it's also possible for monsters to be friendly when you find them, so... That can be nice. Um, I've also noticed it's pretty predictable for monsters to be behind doors. I think that was in the DOS version too, but uh, generally we can assume that when we go through a door we're going to have an encounter, or at least we have to assume that that's what's going to happen. So uh, let's go to the inn and have Guile rest, and we'll pool our gold. He's really close to leveling up, thankfully. our cleric, oops, I gotta switch to the other character. We want our cleric to rest to get his spells back. The fighters need 82 and the thief needs how much? The thief actually leveled up and gained 4 hit points, which is a lot. Um, unfortunately, the thief lost a luck, and luck can be really good for the Thief, so that's too bad, but we gained a Strength, an IQ, and a Vitality. So overall, not a bad level up. But uh, that is one of the unfortunate things about this game, is that you can actually lose uh, stats when you level up, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but that's a thing in this game. So uh, A lot of people online I saw said that the Super Nintendo version of this game is probably the... Um, with the fan translation is probably the ideal way to play Wizardry 1 now. It's uh, in a collection on the Super Nintendo called The Story of Lilgamen, I think, with the first three games. And uh, I would play that version if the game link 
for grid cartographer worked with that version, but I don't think there is a um, a game link for that game, unfortunately. If we look at auto tracking, um, you can see Wizardry Proving Grounds has uh, Dawson SNES and NES and uh, Logaman Saga for PS1 and the Sega Saturn is tracked. Um, oh, actually, the SNES version does have that. Uh, so that's another thing we could try. <laughs> I was I was assuming there was not an auto tracking profile uh, for that version, but uh, I think we are going to still stick with this version anyway, um, just because it's it's as old school as I'm willing to go. Basically, as long as uh, we have it's like easier to play and we have some graphics and sound, but uh, it's still kind of that DOS feel. I don't know. Uh, I'll think about it, actually. I guess if you would rather see the Super Nintendo version, definitely let me know. Uh, I saw that there was one Super Nintendo Let's Play on YouTube by the Game Hoarder uh, with commentary, so that's cool. Although he does, it didn't look like he was mapping at the same time, so I don't know. Let me know if you have a preference for sure, if you'd rather see this or the Super Nintendo version. Um, so that's one level up, and we will try to level up the rest of the party now. And uh, from what I saw, the Super Nintendo version um, has the same music, except it's uh, up versions of this music, so it sounds a little bit better because they have more sound channels on the Super Nintendo. Um, I would also have to find the fan translation for that, but I'm sure that's easy enough to uh, get up and running. So let's head back to the maze. And we're just going to try and get some experience here. Since there's not too much else actually on this floor that I can show you right now. Slimes are perfect because they're super weak. All the slimes I've fought so far are super weak anyway. 18 XP is not going to quite do it. I need like 100. Like some of these these areas are surprisingly sparse. There's really not much else to do but fight monsters. Which I guess makes sense for a first floor if you're trying to teach the player how this game is gonna work. You don't wanna like put pit traps everywhere on the first floor, but I wasn't really sure what I was expecting. Just not so much like empty space, I guess. Um we can search if we hit shift. Oh, this is another menu. If you hit select, this menu comes up, and if you quit out of the game, it actually exits the game, and it keeps your party in this part of the dungeon, and then you can, if you restart the game and go to uh, the training grounds or the, the outpost, one of those buildings, if you start an out, restart an out party, uh, it puts you back in the dungeon with this party, um, which is a feature that, like, Etrian Odyssey uh, let's you do as well, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, we can also set the time delay, I think, is what that is, uh, for text. But we're not going to worry about that. We can search, but this search is literally only for finding dead party members. It's not for finding items. So if there's ever a time where we need to pick up an item, the game is going to tell us. At least that is what my understanding is of how search works. So even though it said, who's going to search to find the key, we can't actually search manually um, to find items. And that's good because if we were allowed to do that, I would probably search on every tile. So uh, it's good that we're not allowed to do that, I think. I think we can take the scruffy man, uh, hopefully. Let's cast a sleep for sure. Five damage. Two are asleep. Seven damage. Nine. It's a scruffy man for nine damage. Killed one. Okay, we have to be really careful. I think we can do it though. The thief is going to continue to not help <laughs> at all. It's the bad part of ha about having thieves is they they're really not good for anything else. Um. We will cast a holito. Good, so Fred's not dying anymore. 
and he did get hit. Wow, look at all that experience. Okay. I'll very carefully try and get out of here. Oops. I went to the wrong area. Um, let's run, because I just want to level up. I know we need to take those early fights when we can get them, but I don't want to lose Fred for sure if we don't have a Dios to cast. So we can level up again. And this is this is how the flow of this game is going to go, pretty much. This is the gameplay, so I hope you're uh, ready for that. Um, do we waste? I guess we waste ten gold on this to, to level up for sure. Gain five hit points and a lot of stats. That's really good. Um, yeah, we might as well use the gold to, to get hit points back at this point, I think. Made the next level. Strength, IQ, piety, vitality, agility, luck, and a hit point. So one hit point is not great, but everything else is good. Uh, pull gold, please. I like this track a lot, actually, too. Even though it's kind of warbly NES music. Let's actually pay 50 uh, so we don't waste as much time. Gain a level, gain IQ, piety, lost vitality. And only one hit point, unfortunately. Um, another number to remember is that we need 250 gold to resurrect somebody from the Temple of Kant. We can't actually go there because um, nobody's dead or poisoned or anything. But uh, and it's always it's not always guaranteed that somebody's going to be that someone will actually be successfully resurrected. There's a random chance and that they might turn into dust instead. And if they're turned into dust, I think we need 500 gold to bring them back from that state. So we could end up paying 750 gold just to bring one character back, which is not really worth it for these low levels. Um, but for later parties, if we end up getting like a level 10 party or something, then we're probably going to want to save up the gold just to bring back a character if we possibly can get them out of the dungeon. Um, it's really hard to get characters back in this game, it seems like. But as long as we grind enough and are careful enough, I think we're going to do okay. We'll cross our fingers. Um, did we level up everybody? Let me just check. You've already leveled up, right? Uh, Guile? Let's just go down the line. Okay. Cleric. You made the next level. You learn new spells. Level the exclamation points. Uh, gain strength, IQ, vitality, piety, lost agility, but gain three hit points. So that's a pretty good level up. The mage got any spells, strength, piety, vitality, agility, lost luck, and gain a hit point. So five hit points on the mage is not great, but if we play our cards right, they're never going to get hit unless we drop down a pit, which uh, can be pretty devastating. So hopefully the mage will get some more hit points soon in next levels, but I think I'm going to end the video here and hit save. and. Um, we're also going to, uh, if we quit out, uh, it should save our party here too. Uh, and then you can you can either switch off and remember to hit the reset switch when you're turning off your Nintendo, or hit A for more wizardry. Um, and then we just have to add our party back um, at the tavern, and you can see they're all here. So easy enough. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna end the video there. Thank you so much for watching. Um, thanks again for all your encouraging comments recently on that DOS Wizard 3 video. It really means a lot to me. Uh, if you've made it this far, you can follow me on Twitter at ncburnham uh, for more updates. And uh, I've also been streaming on Twitch recently at Nostalgic One every weekday from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I'll put links to that stuff in the description. And uh, I'm really excited to see how this series goes and what you guys think of it. So I will see you in the next video. Bye!